it's springtime. Man, what a fabulous time of year is this. You can't say the word springtime without smiling. Everything bursting into life, filled with energy. The leaves now almost fully grown, the flowers coming up. You just have that sense of burgeoning life all around and it makes you feel alive inside. It's also a time of year when here in Alaska, especially, we think about migration. The songbirds coming north, warblers, sparrows, thrushes, ducks, geese, filling the forest with sound. The caribou up in the north, moving north into their summering grounds on the tundra. And there's another migration. It's an incredibly important one, but it's hidden. It's a secret migration, and it's happening right here, right now. This is the migration of the salmon. Millions of little salmon all over Alaska from the southern coast, up along the Gulf of Alaska, the Bering Sea, clear up to the Arctic, throughout the interior. Little salmon coming to life and moving. Now, if we think back a second, last summer and fall, this place right here in this stream was absolutely jammed with pink salmon, chum salmon, cohos, all going through their rituals of mating and spawning, laying the eggs down here in the gravels of this stream. Then over the next couple of months or so, those little eggs incubated and eventually hatched into a little bitty thing, an orangish, pinkish scrap of a thing that's called an alevin. Now the alevin doesn't really look like a fish, long skinny body, but it's got a great big pot belly. That's the yolk of the egg, and that's providing the nutrients for that little alevin that's still living down there in the gravels. And as time goes by, that pot belly gets smaller and smaller as the nutrients are used up. And when they're gone, that fish has to start eating. So it wiggles its way up through these gravels, comes up to the surface, grabs a little, ooh, that's cold water. Whew, don't wanna go swimming here right now. <laughs> grabs a little gulp of air and that fills its swim bladder and allows it to have equilibrium in the water. Okay, so now that little fish is called a fry, and it's gonna live in the stream for a while in some cases. The little pink salmon and the chum salmon, they go right straight downstream as soon as they come out of the gravel. The cohos, the sockeyes, and the king salmon or chinooks stay in the river longer, usually one to three years. Also in the lakes where they feed on little tiny planktonic organisms, insects that fall into the stream from these surrounding forests, which are also crucial salmon habitat. They gotta have pure water, has to have high oxygen content. Salmon can't live just anywhere. They like cold water, like this stuff right here. So now, eventually, they all move downstream. But it's important to point out that while they're living in the rivers, they need complex habitat like we've got here. Look at the logs. Look at the, all the places where they can hide from predators. The complex system that provides them with plenty of food. And along this side, here we have a little example of another kind of complexity. This little irregularity in the shore of the stream. They've got to have places where they can get out of the way if there's a flood. Incidentally, there's lots of little fingerling salmon here in this little pool area. You can see them dimpling the surface. There's lots of fingerlings here in the river as well. It's pretty exciting to see them. Some of these fish, like here, will only go a few miles down to the ocean. But imagine this. A king salmon in rivers like the Kuskokwim and especially the Yukon, up to 2,000 miles those little bitty fish all the way down to the ocean. Another amazing thing about salmon. Now, once 
they all end up down there at the mouth of the river in the estuary where salt water and fresh water meet. And their bodies go through a transformation, turning into what are called smolts, little silvery salmony fish. And inside, their body is adjusting from being a freshwater fish, which is the evolutionary origin of the salmon, to being a saltwater fish, which is where salmon moved in their evolutionary history because there's so much food out in the ocean. Off they go eventually, heading out to sea. They hang around the shorelines for a while, a month, two, maybe longer. Then off they go, far out into the pelagic depths of the North Pacific, south of the Aleutian chain. And there they live for varying numbers of years. Some of them just a year, like the pink salmon that come back here, the cohos, the chums, the chinooks, the sockeyes longer. In fact, some of the sockeyes, uh, some of the chums and, and king salmon will be out there six or seven years. That's how they get to be so big. Okay, and then when they reach adulthood, they make that famous migration back to the stream where they were born. Many of them come right here to this same place again. That endless cycle, renewing. Salmon here in the North Pacific have existed for about six million years, with an ancestry going back at least 50 million years. Ancient fish. And if we treat the waters right, and if we manage our fisheries careful, carefully, they can continue to do this literally forever, bringing food to our communities, enriching our livelihoods, unlike any other industry that humans have created. Salmon can be a perpetual living thing that never ends. It's kind of up to us. Well, every spring when I'm along Alaskan rivers, I love to think about this hidden migration that's going on right here. It's an absolute miracle and it's beautiful.